Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. I've got a question from a fellow boater, uh, Chris. Chris reaches out and asks, Jeff, I have a French built sailboat with 24 volts and 220, 50 hertz AC uh, electrical. Shore power here in the US is 110, 60 hertz. So here's this, this is a very important key, right? The difference is not only voltage, 220 in Europe, 110, mostly here in North America, but also uh, the frequency. 50 hertz in Europe and 60 hertz here. And the frequency is the issue. It's easy to change voltage, but uh, voltage and frequency conversion is totally doable. Uh, bigger boats do it all the time. Many North Havens come up with standard package and Celine's and everyone else. Definitely lots of companies do it. We've installed them, they work. But the challenge is, what about for some boaters, they can't fit in those big devices, right? A device that both converts frequency and voltage. They can't afford it. You know, they're a lot of money. Um, and so most of us would love that solution. You know, give me any voltage, give me any frequency, and let me, whatever input you have, give it to me, and I'll create the output I want. That's what the big trawlers that go around the world do, and it's certainly convenient. But for some of us, we don't have that option. So in this case, and this is Chris's choice, what should he do, right? So you've got an AC system built for Europe and you have, you're now connecting to a shore power system that is North American. One of the option um, is to basically create, so you connect your battery charger to shore power, right? So you basically end up having a North American shore power system. North American 30 amp, 30 amp outlet, you put an ELCI breaker, 30 amp, right? And what you're doing is you're gonna then have a breaker for maybe an outlet that is 120, right? On the boat, maybe you're gonna put an outlet somewhere, but maybe not, maybe you don't need 120 at all and you choose to not use 120 for anything else to run potentially a battery charger. And that battery charger, and that's the good news with battery chargers, is battery chargers can actually be run on different frequencies and different voltages. And they're pretty much the only devices, well, not only, but one of the very few devices that we have on boats that can do both. They can both take a high range of voltage and also take a frequency range. So what you end up doing is you have a battery charger connected through a AC system that is built for North America, and that's not too bad, ELCI, galvanic isolator, again, not crazy, dedicated AC panel. And the whole purpose of that is just to power what? To power a battery charger. And a battery charger, um, you know, generally is a large 12 volt one, uh, and you can get 24 volt because this, um, Chris has a 24 volt, you could probably get 100 amp 24 volt battery charger. Uh, Master Volt makes one. We've installed them, they're great. And now you could actually take that power and have 200 amps of charging current going. But that's, no, that's 100 amps at 24, which would be 200 amps at 12. So you've got 100 amps at 24, and then you take whatever power comes into the battery bank, gets converted via an inverter to 220, volts at 50 hertz. So you're literally playing through a conversion. Now the problem with this setup is that ultimately you're limited for continuous draw to whatever current output your charger can do. And in this, this instance, it can only do 100 amps at 24. But by the time you do conversion, that's not 100 amps at 220. That's 100 amps at 24 going to bad battery bank. And then the inverter charger pulls from that battery bank. So you can't run big loads. You can't run 3000 watts because the charger is not outputting 3000 watts, right? It's outputting less than that. It's only outputting 100 amps at 24 volts. So it's convenient for boaters that don't need to be plugged in all the time. And what they do is their inverter will draw more power and maybe more than shore power can give them through the battery charger, but it's okay because if it's only for a short period of time, the battery charger can pick up. It's gonna catch up over time. It's gonna bring the battery bank back to full. Now, of course, if you're running a continuous load that exceeds and far exceeds your charging ability, then you're gonna have a time limit. And that time limit is gonna be the function of your battery bank size. 
So it's a little tricky, but we've done these sort of setups and it's a good compromise so that you don't have to completely rewire a boat to North American standards while not having to install a device that allows you to change both frequency and voltage on your boat. So common problem as boats move around from one side of the ocean to the other, uh, but there's various solutions. And if you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.